Okay, welcome to Calculus 1, Math 151. I put together all these videos to help preview and highlight what we're going to cover in class, but uh, they're by no means an alternative to actually being there. Come to class every day, well prepared, which means do the homework and watch these videos. And in class, please ask questions. I guarantee if you do those three things, you'll do a lot better. Uh, this first section, we're actually going to introduce the, uh, the central topic of the whole course. We're going to talk about slopes of secant lines and slopes of tangent lines from various points of view. Uh, let's suppose, first of all, we have a graph. When, 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 when the question asks, find the slope of the secant line from, uh, on the interval 2 to 5, that means from x equals 2 to x equals 5. So um, think of it as when this point when x equals 2, to this point when x equals 5, they want you to find the slope of this line right here. Um, and all you have to do is, is take the change in y over change in x from those two points, right? Well, this y coordinate is about 4.3, looks like. This is about 1.8. So, slope of the secant line on 2 to 5 becomes 4.3 minus 1.8 divided by 5 minus 2, which is about 0 0.8. Second question, they want you to find the slope of the secant line on 2 to 4. So, from this point when x is 2 to this point when x is 4, you want to find the um, slope of that line right there. Again, you just take the change in y, so this looks like about 5 minus 1.8 divided by 4 minus 2, and you get about 1.6. Okay, well what if you wanted to approximate the slope of the tangent line at x equals uh, 2? Now, the tangent line means you're trying to find a line that has the same slope as the curve does there that goes through that point when x equals 2. So I'm trying to find a, um, a line that goes through the point when x is 2 and has the same slope as the curve does. Uh, let's see. If you take the spaghetti noodle here and you think of it this way, suppose I fix this point when x is 2 and the other point is going through another point on the graph. So this is the secant line. As the second point gets closer and closer to the first point when x is 2, notice that the secant line slope is a better approximation to the tangent line slope, isn't it? The closer that the second point gets to the point when x equals 2, the better the approximation. If we could, in fact, we'd pick two points really, really close together. But we can't, because it's not very accurate, is it? So here's how we're going to, this is how we're going to approximate the slope of the tangent line at, say, x equals 2. We're going to actually take our ruler out and try to draw the tangent line as best we can when x equals 2. Try to make it go through the point and have the same slope as the curve does there. Draw your tangent line. Then we're going to pick two points that are far apart and easy to read. So this point looks like about the point um, 4 comma 6. That's an easy point to read. Second point might be this point down here, 1 comma 0. So if we use those two points to approximate the slope of the tangent line, we end up with the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 is about 6 minus 0 divided by 4 minus 1, which comes up to be about 2. So that's how we're going to approximate the slope of the tangent line when we're given a graph. All right, what if you're given a table? Suppose, suppose we want to find the slope of the secant line, the first of all, from 1980 to 1990. Well, that's the slope of the secant line going from this year, this year to this year. So it's going to be the change in population in millions divided by the change in year. That's the slope of the secant line from 1980 to 1990. You get 5280-4450 over 1990-1980. When you simplify that, you get 83 million people per year. So if you look at the units, what does that mean? That's the average growth rate, of course. Now, okay, well, what would the slope of the tangent line... First of all, how would you compute the slope of the tangent line from a table? And secondly, what would that mean? Well, uh, this is kind of awkward. We really don't know how to do this because we don't really have a graph or anything, but this is the, the convention we're going to do. Instead of just using the slope of the secant line from 1980 to 1990, we're going to also compute the slope of the secant line from 1970 to 1980. And we're going to take that slope and average it with the one from 1980 to 1990. Okay, so the slope of, this is how we're going to define the slope of the tangent line at, at 1980. It's the average of the slope of the secant line before and after. Now, we have already computed the slope of the secant line from 1980 to 1990, but what's the slope of the secant line from 1970 to 1980? It's going to be 4450 minus 3710 divided by 1980 minus 1970. You get this. 
and you add that to 80, that becomes 77. You add that to 83, which we already computed, and you divide by 2, you get 80 million people per year. And that's, that's, that's the convention we're going to use. We're going to call that uh, the best approximation we can, at least, to the instantaneous growth rate at 1980. Okay. Okay, in this last example, we're going to use our TI graphing calculator to help us compute the slope of secant lines, slope of tangent lines when we're given an actual formula. Um, let's start off by entering the function in our TI. So let's turn the calculator on, hit y equals, and let's enter 9 minus x squared. Let's go back to the home screen, second quit. Okay, let, let's suppose you wanted to compute f of 2. Remember how to do that? Well, there's lots of ways. Here's one way to do it. Um, f of 2 is actually can be thought of as y1 of 2, right? So how would you do that? Well, the way you do it is you hit vars, go over to y vars, hit enter twice, hit left parentheses, 2, right parentheses. So when you hit enter, you should get 5, right? Sure enough. Okay, so let's say you wanted to um, find the average rate of change in f of x on 2 to 3, 2 to 2.5, and 2 to 2.1. Instead of entering the slope, instead of computing the slopes three different times, we're going to do something that's kind of slick. We're going to enter this expression right here into our TI. This is the slope of the secant line from 2 to x. And then all we have to do then is enter various x values. So if you enter x equal 3, that's the slope of the secant line from 2 to 3, and so on. So what we're going to do is enter this expression into y2. So here we go. We go um, over to y equals and then we go down to y2. Now be careful here. There's a lot of... you got to be careful with this. Um, left parenthesis, y1. Remember how to do that? You go vars over to y vars, hit enter twice, parentheses x, close parentheses, minus y1 of 2. So you go again, vars over to y vars, hit enter twice, left parentheses 2, close parentheses, close parentheses on the numerator, divided by parentheses um, x minus 2, close parentheses. So that, again, that's the slope of the secant line from 2 to x. So what I'm going to do here, folks, I'm going to use the table feature to compute the slope of the secant line from uh, various uh, values of x. Remember, when I enter 3 into y2, uh, that's going to be the slope of the secant line from 2 to 3. Uh, let's see, before I do that, I, I don't want... Um, I don't want y1 in my table, so what you can do is if you hit left, uh, get on top, uh, hit your left arrow, get on top of the equal sign, hit enter, that disengages it. Now for the table feature, hit second table setup first, make sure it's on ask, and then um, uh, when you hit second table, let's delete all this stuff. If you have any things in the x uh, column, just hit the delete button until they're all gone. So again, when, when I when I enter three. I'm finding the slope of the secant line from 2 to 3, and I get negative 5. What's the slope of the secant line from 2 to 2.5? Hit 2.5, you get negative 4.5. What's the slope of the secant line from 2 to 2.1? That'll be negative 4.1. Pretty slick, huh? Anyway, we can use this also. Let's suppose we wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2. Now remember, the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2 uh, we're looking at the slope of the secant line and we're asking what happens as as the second point gets close to the first point when x is 2. So all we have to do is pick our second point where x coordinate is um, close to 2, like how about 2.01 or 2.001. This is the slope of the secant line from 2 to 2.001 and we're getting a number close to negative 4. Well let's look on the other side. What about 1.9 and 1.99. This is the slope of the secant line from 1.99 to, to 2, negative 3.99. So whatever these slopes are getting close to, that's what the slope of the tangent line is, and it looks like it's getting close to negative 4. So that's, that's why we call the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2 equal to negative 4. It, it appears that way anyway. All right, I'm going to talk about some notation for just a second here. This is, this is where we're going here. Um, so the slope of the tangent line at x equal 2, you can think of first finding the slope of the secant line, that's what this is, from 2 to x, and then when you write this notation limit as x goes to 2, all that means is, what is this expression getting close to as x gets close to 2 from both sides? And, what we, and so we also write it like this. This is called the limit as x goes to 2 um, of the slope of the secant line from 2 to x, which is also written like this. 
Okay, we'll see you tomorrow.